How would you explain the influence Muhammad Ali had on you? He had probably one of the greatest and earliest influences on me because my father had boxed a little as a kid and my grandfather ended that. He said, you're not going to be a boxer. But my dad was a pretty tough guy. And in the day when they'd have a world title fight, it was only on the radio. So my dad would come up to my brother and I's room and the three of us would gather around the radio to hear the blow by blow of who, whether it was, and I started doing that really in the days of Ingemar Johansson and Floyd Patterson. And then it became, and then of course the big ugly bear, Sonny Liston came along and destroyed Patterson with two first round knockouts and was considered unbeatable. And then along came this young guy called the Louisville Lip, Muhammad Ali, who did a record album called I Am The Greatest. And I used to sit and listen to that album day in and day out. I had it memorized. I still have it today. I can do it today. Why did you listen to it so much? Because he became my hero. Okay. And uh, I remember when he was going to fight List and nobody picked Cassius to win except me. I said, Cassius is going to win, Dad. And sure enough, Cassius did win. And uh, uh, he's been my hero since I was probably nine or ten years old. Uh, I got the chance to spend a day with him when I was governor. It was one of the best days of my life. What did you guys do during that day? Hung out. Uh, we went to his Mohammed's home at the time in Barron Springs, Michigan. I was governor. Uh, well, what led to that was that when I won the governorship and I gave my acceptance speech, no one thought I could win, just as no one thought Cassius would beat Sonny Liston. And I remember that night, Mohammed Cassius saying, we shocked the world. So I got up that night and I told the story of Mohammed beating Sonny Liston and how they shocked the world. And I said, we shocked the world. Two weeks later, businessman Harvey McKay came to my office in the lower bowels of the Capitol because Governor Carlson was still governor and we're waiting for the transition to take place. It was later in the afternoon, he had 10 minutes, and I thought, what is this about? And Harvey walked in with a big box, and he set it down on my governor-elect desk, and he said, I'm here to deliver this to you. And he said, you better open it. And when I opened it up, there was a pair of red Everlast gloves in it, and it said to Governor Jesse Ventura, you shocked the world, Muhammad Ali. He had been watching that night on television. Your son, Tyrell, told me you got pretty emotional with getting that gift. Oh, yeah. Sits in my office behind glass today. Why do you think you got so emotional? Because he's your hero. And I get emotional now. because he gave up the greatest title in the world, being a man of his conviction. And if I can be half that man, he is the greatest. No, he gave up the title, the most prestigious title in the world, because he refused to go to war. And they would have given him a pat job. All he did was walk around doing exhibitions, but he knew if he agreed to do that, more young black people would be sent off to a war he was against. And he stood up and said, I'll give up the greatest title in the world because I will be a man of conviction. Did you talk to him about that when you were with probably, him that day in Michigan? Probably. The most thing I the thing I remember the most was we sat down and we were he gets stuff every day. People mail him sure. stuff, VCRs, this, and he had gotten a new one of early days of him fighting. I mean, this is way before he was a champ. And he's here and I'm here and we're watching him fight. And he's in one particular fight, I think Sonny Banks, if I remember right. And Banks catches it. Maybe it wasn't him, but it was somebody. 
caught him clean, clean. Pow, and Mohammed's down on his back, right? Well, he quick got up and, you know, he went on to win the fight. But when he went down on his back, I looked over at Mohammed. Mohammed looked at me, and even through his Parkinson's, he leaned over and whispered to me, slipped. <laughs> and I just burst out <laughs> laughing. I thought, only Mohammed, you know, this was no slip. This was a clean shot, and he knew it. But only Mohammed would tell you, slip. <laughs> For more clips from this interview, visit GrahamBensinger.com.